Thank you, Christine. Um, you left out one category, which is the no new town, because uh, simply in this place there is not much of a town uh, yet. So it's uh, you'll see in a minute. Um, First, I want to uh, kind of make a statement. I'm standing here for a whole group of people um, and a whole group of companies, uh, which you see uh, uh, from you on the on the uh, right of the of the image. Um, it's um, a group of uh, people and companies which work under the umbrella of uh, UN Habitat uh, to actually make um, a, what it's called a planned city extension for uh, for Accra. Now. Um, um, this is all uh, Dutch companies because um, the program actually was also supported by the Dutch uh, Creative Industries Fund. Uh, but we're working not in, insul uh, in isola isolation. We're working in an integrated team with the local planning department, with the, uh, the sort of National Planning uh, Council of uh, Ghana. We've met, I think, four ministers, the prime minister, uh, and um, the only person we haven't met on the on the top level is actually the president. Um, that's the one side of the of the of the the, the story. The other is we've met with um, all the local um, representatives. They, the, the clans, the tribes, are still a very very important function, uh, and we're in regular contact with them. Um, I'm for the purpose of uh, of that presentation. I want to focus on uh, the questions we've been asking ourselves as you know Dutch planners coming to uh, to another to another country or to another continent, and as to how we can actually. Uh, deal with uh, with with uh, challenges which we're uh, experiencing um, in these in these places. Uh, so I leave a lot of the of the process, which is all about creating support uh, and uh, for the plan uh, out for now. Uh, but we can probably come back later in the in the questions and answers. Um, this is a quote which uh, which um, I um, in preparation for the first visit um, I actually found. Um, in a in a document um, about Dar es Salaam, and I you know to us this sounds uh, um, sounds rather kind of normal you know everybody has the right to live in a formal city yes we all do live in a formal city uh, and I think most of most of us actually have forgotten what it means to live in a formal city we're talking about you know the shape a city takes the shape open spaces take but we are uh, actually barely considering that it is a problem that there is no water there is no roads there is no electricity there is no uh, sewage treatment uh, there is no um, uh, measures to uh, to deal with uh, with flooding, etc., uh, etc., et uh, waste management, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, these are all things which are actually a big issue in uh, in uh, in other parts of the world still. And so that was one question or one one uh, kind of discovery. The other was, um, you know, the sort of um, this kind of distinction we tend to make between uh, you know a sort of planned and an unplanned city. Um, now, I always, I mean, we saw this picture this morning already, but I still is, I think still it's quite telling about conditions, you know. A, a, a favela is not all bad, uh, and uh, a gated community is, is not all good. The other way around, it's also true. So, um, the, 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 the kind of the difference and how, how you kind of express things and how you make things very often are, are much more in a detail than on, on, a, on, a, sort of, uh, on a sort of general statement. Now, um, when we came to that place, and uh, uh, this is how the place looks like at the moment from an aerial picture, this is the area. Um, it's basically all, um, all empty land. Um, it's very close to the sea level. Um, there is basically almost no activity. There is a series of small villages, but that's, uh, that's about it. Um, and of course, you know, when you get onto virgin land, uh, then the question is, what do you do with that? And um, uh, these are kind of recent examples of uh, new plannings and new towns. And uh, we were very clear in the beginning, this is not what we want, even though our counterparts in Ghana would very much uh, like to see this sort of renderings. Uh, we kind of um, strongly object actually going down that route. Because we somehow felt that you know with this kind of an idea, an I ideal world, an idealized world, uh, which somehow kind of looks good on renderings or uh, in uh, Hollywood movies, but actually reality in Africa is a lot more uh, dealing with much more basic uh, problems. Now, um, somehow um, we also, of course, did our homework um, and got back into into what have new towns actually been and what have development templates actually been. And somehow you find um, one model which 
which you know there's kind of the modernist idea of the new town as as something which is uh, kind of efficiently planned and even though the results might not always be uh, convincing uh, we felt that the general approach of kind of taking a very rational stand in terms of developing at least parts of the system is is definitely valid um, especially when you then come to a condition and this is actually uh, um, uh, in in this area where um, there is absolutely no planning control um, people just build uh, their houses they built informally um, which of course gives them a roof but at the same time as soon as you want to establish even the most basic infrastructure you're actually struggling with a system which is almost impossible um, to kind of ret retroactively establish transport system water supply etc etc um, uh, to actually get this informal development into uh, becoming a formal city so what we felt is it it needs a sort of a, a series of basic uh, things we need to achieve now, working uh, with you in Habitat, they have established a series of principles which are about, you know, um, kind of dense, compact, um, uh, mixed um, and permeable uh, cities, which we took as a starting point. And we also took another starting point, which is the most basic organizing principle you can, uh, uh, can come up with, which is basically the grid as the, the basic organizational tool for, uh, for urbanism. Now, there was a reason for that. Um, grids are easy to draw. Um, for a grid, you need a ruler, you don't need anything else. Um, and grids are easy to set out uh, in, uh, in sort of real life uh, in the countryside. And as a matter of fact, we're even thinking of doing a one-to-one, -one, plotting the grid one-to-one -one onto the countryside, actually demarcating where infrastructure might come in the future, just to make it clear to people that settle informally that they are not putting their house on the street, but probably next to a, to a, to a corridor, which might be a street in the future. So somehow it's also about inventing uh, kind of ways of, of, uh, of making simple things also visible to people which have absolutely zero experience with with plans uh, and, and, and planning, um, you know, procedures. The other is, and that's what uh, Christine also uh, kind of uh, touched upon, you know, Africa is growing and Africa is growing and cities are growing enormously. Uh, and how this future exactly looks like is, is very hard, if not impossible to anticipate. So we are also looking for a system which actually can grow over the course of time and can take on different conditions like you see here uh, and Park Avenue in New York from 1882 till uh, till I think last year that is you know over the course of you know a hundred years a bit more than a hundred years it can completely change from one condition to the other but on that is also only possible because you have a very uh, redundant system which actually allows for these kinds of uh, uh, these kinds of changes Flooding is a big problem, and this is a real-life picture uh, from Accra, and uh, just two weeks ago the city was flooded again, um, and um, um, we're kind of, from the Dutch background, we kind of um, know what water is, but water here is a whole different cup of tea, because it always basically, um, um, it, it just comes and it goes everywhere, and there is no measures to actually deal with the water, other than just waiting until it's uh, it's gone again. and. Um, and all of that within uh, within a whole urban system, which we've been uh, kind of uh, talking about. So uh, we're dealing with a very large area. At the same time, it was also important to us that we have to sort of we're not ending up with these sort of large scale plans, but actually have this fine grain. Um, starting off with flooding, this is the this is the area, and as you can see, um, this area here is actually very close uh, to sea level. The soil is uh, largely from clay, so there is almost no uh, water going into the ground, which one was one of the big uh, the big drivers. This is basically mapping out um, uh, areas that kind of regularly get flooded, um, and we use them actually as as the sort of starting point of crafting the whole plan, dealing with the water as the very first thing it needs to be dealt with. Um, looking at the watersheds and actually putting the first main and the most important roads actually uh, onto these watersheds because they're kind of typically also put on a higher level uh, in that area anyway so that they don't get uh, they don't get flooded and with that we basically established a system of rivers with buffer zones around them that actually can take um, the vast majority of uh, the the rainfall that uh, you are uh, uh, regularly experiencing then we looked at what's there in existing paths, uh, existing routes, existing uh, streets, and the goal is to actually upgrade them to become, um, you know, sort of more urban streets. And this, in a way, is, the, is already the backbone for uh, for the city. 
Um, as I said, water runoff is a big problem, and we kind of, again, looking for something uh, which which works efficiently. It was easy to uh, to implement. Uh, we established this uh, this grid of uh, of um, 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 canals, which actually or or, or, or singles or uh, kind of water storage spaces, which actually help dewatering uh, the area and also work as a, as an additional buffer, uh, which we need for uh, for storm. And in between, what is left, in a way, we kind of declared uh, the urban area. And uh, for the for the for the green space, I think it's also important to notice, and it's been mentioned this morning, urban agriculture still has a very very important role in the city. Um, and these areas, even though the ground is not very fertile, they are actually very uh, suitable for uh, sort of low key local. Uh, agricultural production and as you go they can actually then be sort of upgraded to either more urban functions or more uh, more um, um, advanced ways of uh, agriculture greenhouses etc etc what you have in the Dutch context but with doing that you also when you give the land an agricultural function then you also actually protect the borders from the city just sprawling and you are in a way also limiting informal uh, settlement activities in certain re areas which are key for the for dealing with the water problem for the 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 let's say the the, the, the urban part of the city we kind of actually closely looked oh, why is this not it's not to see here actually this is a this there is supposed to be a grid uh, of uh, of these grid units 36 by 180 meters uh, and we kind of closely studied you know what kind of typologies can actually go there how can they how can the smallest units actually uh, be established and still have um, uh, space for uh, economic activity? You know, a little private outdoor garden where you can plant your own things, or you can make a workshop out of it. So this was the, the sort of very, the very small uh, uh, unit, and that just kind of uh, uh, grew into into uh, a grid which is roughly a, a square kilometer. Uh, and outside that, you have the big, uh, the big um, uh, water um, storage and uh, water uh, retention areas. Now, the other was growth. Uh, if you go there, you see wherever there's a road, there is actually uh, settlement activity. And we want to use this actually as a dynamic. So um, um, in a first step, um, you know, you'll build a road, uh, you'll build a, the basic water system, and people will just settle uh, around it. Uh, we also uh, want to integrate all the key infrastructures into this, uh, into this system. And then as you go, you know, kind of upgrade different types of infrastructure. So they also um, um, and we're working with Arcadis on that, how they can actually grow over the course of time. So you don't have to do all the investment up front. And this is how it uh, basically grows. And then we looked at, um, because it's a very large area, it's 300 square kilometers, basically, uh, we looked at, uh, at, at the way how we can actually uh, render a city and how we can, in a way, typecast different parts of the city in, in a way that doesn't look like a shiny rendering and develop different... A total of eight different sort of quarter types, if you want. Each one coming with a mix of uses, but each one having a different focus: more employment-led, more residential, different densities, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And actually, kind of map that out on the entire on the entire area, just to see how many people can we actually get there. And it's about one and a half million people that could actually uh, settle here at these densities of about fifteen thousand uh, uh, residents. But of course, you know, a city also has different different uh, focal points. Uh, so we kind of didn't just do that, but we also kind of defined a series of key moments in the city which we want to we, which we want to use. This watershed being, you know, a sort of linear axis around which a lot of commercial and economic activity is. The waterfront, which is more leisure related uh, and 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 has a harbor. Uh, other areas which are a bit more suburban, uh, uh, re bordering the green, which is more residential. Um, you have the, the Trans-African Highway running through, which, you know, almost naturally lends itself to having uh, industrial uh, and, and, and uh, sort of more logistics-related uh, activities. A university which is already located here, but which could also help growing, you know, a sort of more um, educational business uh, access towards an airport which is planned uh, further in the north. So there is these considerations which actually uh, make this happen. Uh, and here you basically see, because we are always thinking about how is this going to happen, um, how is this going to grow. Um, this is the existing settlement pattern we have at the moment, and then you know over the course of time the area will fill itself 
um, with uh, with um, with um, quarters emerging, um, and slowly actually the different types of infrastructures uh, coming into into the picture, bigger parks, bigger open spaces, uh, motorways that get upgraded, uh, or intersections, uh, public transport systems, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So in the end, you'll have uh, this kind of uh, picture. Now, if I tell you all of this works with 10 very simple principles, that was very important to us. How do we actually keep it as simple as possible for everybody to understand? And this is basically, this is the, if you want the planning legislation for, uh, for this city. Um, and that was actually important to us that, you know, everybody, even if no or very little education in planning, can actually, you know, very quickly uh, see and understand, you know, this is allowed and this is not allowed. Uh, so, on one hand, it's a very uh, sort of total kind of view of the thing. On the other hand, it, you, if you know the development dynamics and how the system works in in in, in many of these countries, um, you know, there is. I'm never afraid of too much order because you know the way life turns and uh, uh, the lack of control uh, to a degree actually makes what uh, what we we are missing in many of our cities. This kind of incredible diversity, richness, um, um, uh, you know, different settlement patterns, economic activities, all that merge together um, actually also works because there is a lack of this uh, a lack of this planning control. And what we're doing is just kind of putting the most basic planning control in and leaving the rest actually uh, very much to local people and how to actually uh, fill that in. And you know this is how the aerial picture might look like in uh, I don't know 60 or 70 years, but I'll leave it here. Thank you. <laughs>